Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. And uh, yeah, today has been just a really great day. A couple changes here to the deck. Um, first of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really appreciate your support. It does mean the world to me. In addition, um, there is a copy of the deck list both on Moxfield and untap.gg in the description, as well as a full link to the playlist. So if you want to see some earlier videos, you can check that out. Um, in terms of changes here to the deck, um, actually, before we get into that, just want to again give a shout out here to my first member, um, Kibo. Thank you so much again. I really do appreciate it. This is a really great way to, to help uh, support the channel. So if you guys are considering becoming members, you do get early content. Um, I'm going to be hopefully rolling some other stuff out soon, but it's a nice way to help support the channel um, if you would like to do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the... Uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. So as I was playing today a little bit here um, on my tablet, I found out that I don't really want the full three copies of Grand Abolisher. It's a very powerful effect, but I found that the mana just kind of made it a little bit awkward and um, duplicating the effect doesn't really do anything. So I felt like two copies felt right. This also allowed me to remove the copies of Myrix in the deck and replace them with Mishra's Foundries, which are more aggressive, which I really like. Um, the other cut, I ended up shaving a copy of Lava Spur Boots down to one copy. Um, just because I think we really need to make sure that we hit enough creatures to get Knight Errant of Eos going. Um, and I also wanted to make room for the fourth copy of Brutal Cathar. There's just so much, so much Boros and so many creature decks that I think you want the full playset of Brutal Cathar. It's so good. So the, the four Brutal Cathars that we're running, <clears throat> four copies of March of Otherworldly Light, and then the four Iganjos give us sort of like 12 removal spells, which we need all of, everything we can get here. In addition, I also added um, one more copy of Recruitment Officer into the deck, just because this plays really well with Brutal Cathar, so having kind of a play set of each feels really good. And then I did also cut the, um, the adversaries, the three one lifelinkers. Um, and I wanted to replace those with Spellbook Vendor. Spellbook Vendor has been really powerful in the past, and it's kind of a little bit more small ball than the adversary, but um, the ability to get the scry off is really powerful. It's a vigilance creature, which matters. And in addition, I think it also, you know, if you don't have four mana, it's a more powerful card if you're only stuck on three mana. So I think it's gonna be a nice addition here with two copies of Hopeful Initiate, two copies of Spellbook Vendor, and two copies of Grand Abolisher. These are kind of like my pseudo uh, tutor targets in the sense that Knight Errant of Eos can hopefully go and find one of them if you really need one. So that's kind of why I'm running two copies of each, just still to have decent access to them, but uh, you know, not kind of um, overload on them as it were. So anyways, really happy to get back into some games here. Uh, definitely climbed quite a bit in rating. So now we're sitting, I think at about um, mid 700s. So let's go ahead and jump in. I hope you guys have had an awesome day so far and I am super excited. Um, yeah, to try to see if we can get to rank one mythic. Also, I did do a, um, a draft, uh, a collab draft uh, with my buddy AceMTG. So hopefully that's going to be uh, dropping here a little bit later this week. I think possibly on Saturday. 
and just a matter of um, when he gets done recording that and editing. But it uh, was so much fun doing a collab draft. And I'm going to be hoping to do some more collab drafts in the future as well. I really love just um, kind of like the partnership role and just being able to talk about cards. It's a lot of fun. So anyways, this opening hand... <sighs> yeah, not a huge fan of it. I mean, we have stuff to do on one. I guess it depends on what we're up against. I think that there's a decent chance this hand could be a keeper since we do have like March for early stuff. We've got veterans. I don't like mulliganing if I can get away with it. And I feel like we could potentially draw out of this. So I think I'm actually going to keep this. It's a little bit suspect, but I think this deck um, or this, this hand could get somewhere. Certainly without three one drops, I wouldn't consider it. But yeah, against Mono Red, this is actually a pretty strong opening, provided we can get some land. Okay, well, we drew into land, which was amazing, but... So here, kind of an interesting play is, um, instead of going, like, Grand Abolisher or even Vanguard, I kind of like going Veteran, and then maybe using, like, Abolisher plus March of Otherworldly Light to deal with whatever they play next turn. Kind of cutting the legs out from their early stuff seems to be a really good strategy. Yeah, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and march away their adversary just to give us even more of a buffer here. Abolisher is a fine card, but it's not super necessary in this matchup. And now we're in a commanding role here with Adeline. So hopefully no Witch Doctor Frenzy here, but we're certainly not blocking whatever they do. Looks like they've got the Frenzy. Still, we can race pretty well, and they've got a decent way to go to try to crack our life total here, so... And as long as they don't have, like, end of festivities, we're feeling pretty good. Yeah, never blocking here. We're at 25. I'm just going to try to pressure their life total. Um, we don't really need this to deal with their stuff since we're such a high light total. So I'm just going to play this out and then be able to use Officer. Yeah, another veteran is, I mean, we're at 23. I think we can just take the Brutal Cathar at this point. I guess they might still have some more threats, but...
So, not sure if they're holding like another lightning strike or something else. I guess they have this until um, next turn. But either way, we're just pushing in, see what they do. could play Brutal Cathar here, but I think we just hold the Ganjo. Um, they still, they're obviously holding something in hand. So we want to try to get that out of their hand first. Use it maybe on their blocker. That'll work. All right, nice. Okay, this one is not a keeper. We have all two drops and I guess one march, but that would be funny having all four copper coats though. Okay, we can throw back a planes here. get rid of the case itself with uh, March um, what do we want to do here could use like March plus Thalia to get rid of it play another veteran or we could just play Thalia and then you'd have to pay extra to deal with their case next turn though I guess I don't know how easily like they can like they can probably like sack and get rid of this. So maybe we just march it now. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna play Thalia here. I'm not sure. Okay, they have another case. <laughs> And they both only trigger if they don't have any skeletons. So we can go ahead and uh, use Brukathar on one of them. We're just racing this. Um, yeah. Adeline feels pretty good. And then the question is, do we want to have another veteran here? Um, we want to hold up March. 
Let's see, Corpses of the Lost. Okay, I guess they can return that and do that again. I think Adeline is too good to not play here, so I think I'm just going to play out the Aganjo. Um, we'll still have March. And this lets us race pretty well. Oh, this is nice. Now we can use the Ganjo plus March to deal with these two skeletons and then just push for a lot. So they probably block Adeline. Um, I guess the other thing we could do is we could always like march one of their corpses of the lost and then just have it be a 3-2 and blow them out that way. And I think I want to push the damage here so cuz like I guess we're pushing we're pushing um 2 4 6 7 it'll be 8 if we get rid of one of them. So I guess if we march one and then make the foundry, that actually just does it, right? They'll need something in hand. Okay, so I think that's the play. Yeah, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, they're dead exactly. this really crazy game earlier today on my tablet against um, the Orzhov uh, life gain deck. It was just like crazy back and forth. Eventually pulled it out, but went through like at least half the deck. Alright, opening hand looks good. Okay, so it's the Helping Hand deck. Oh, never mind. I guess this is maybe something else. Some kind of reanimator deck, right? We could get rid of founding the third path. It's probably not a bad idea. So we could go like officer plus march, march for march. I think that's probably right. All right, yeah, let's do it this way. Oh, 
Okay, that was a nice pickup. They could have a counter spell here. They've got three cards in hand. But I think it's worth going for. Hulking Metamorph. Interesting. So I guess the question is, do they have like depopulate on four? Hopefully not. So I think we need to hold up March here because if they have like, I guess they could potentially draw into What could they have? They didn't have lockdown in their hand in their hand last turn. They could potentially draw into it. That way we can also use officer. If we play out Vanguard, that gives us an extra five damage. I don't think it matters, because we're pushing for ten right now. So I don't think we need it to win. I think we just go for either the Officer or March play. I guess it depends on what they do, of course, but... See what they got. Okay. So what does this thing do when it comes back? Turn target creature card from your graveyard with two additional counters on it. Okay. So this thing comes back. I guess I haven't seen this one before. Two additional counters. Creature's power. I think if we march the Rakdos right now, does it... Maybe we just march Rakdos in response? Let's try that. Okay, so now we push in, they block Adeline, we push for one, two, four, five, six, drop them to three. Yeah, I think we still go for it. And then, should we use Officer this turn or hold? I think we hold just in case they've got some nonsense. Glad we held up the uh, <laughs> the march. March is 
Such a clutch card. Okay, opening hand looks great. Um, I guess we don't have like a two here, so I guess we just lead out with um, with officer here. So I kind of like going March just on Kumano. Um, it definitely slows them down a little bit. Although this is an interesting deck. They've got is it colors here. So not sure what they're going to be running out with. But I think getting rid of Kumano is definitely a good idea for us. Otherwise, we just try to like set up for Knight Errant. Because we could go March with Brutal Cathar to get rid of Kumano. Play initiate and then next turn still have Knight Errant going. I kind of like that. And Brutal Cathar isn't very good in this matchup, anyways. Now we can refill. Hopefully pick up some good stuff. Oh yeah, this will be great. Do we trade here? Um, we don't have any life gain, so I could actually see trading here. I think trading is actually fine. Now we can go Thalia plus Copper Coat and then set up for Spellbook Vendor. they don't have like board wipe they easily could though it'd be super rough if they had like three damage to everything brotherhood's end would be rough okay no brotherhood's end so now we can go vendor I assume that's another Fugitive Codebreaker. Yeah. That should do it. Yeah, Spellbook Vendor is really great. Definitely wanted it to be Vendor... Um, I think in that instance. Well, actually, I suppose it would have been all right with the other one if we were using the Vanguard instead. But I think that there are definitely like more situations where you only have three mana and the Spellbook Vendor is a little bit better. Okay, opening hand looks great.
Probably takes, yeah, Knight Errant here. Okay. So the question is, do we want to... I mean, we can push and see if they want to block. I think I'd be happy to use Iganjo here. We want to get Adeline down also, I guess. Because I feel like we can finesse the damage, right? So I think we get like a some free damage if we just push. And if we trade Iganjo for... Creature, I'm totally fine with that too. Surprised that they don't put that on Deep Cavern Bat. Okay, that's a nice pickup. So thanks to Grand Abolisher, they can't do anything with their hand, so we can just know that they have no tricks. Um, and now we can go Copper Coat with Iganjo up. So we could use a ganjo here, but I think we just hold it. I guess if we do use it, it does prevent them from casting any spells this turn, which is kind of nice, so we kind of waste their mana. So that actually is probably a decent consideration. Yeah, I think it's probably worth using the ganjo here, given that. This just locks down their mana so they can't use go for the throat. Or it's something else. And there's the go for the throat.
Okay, that's a nice pickup. Um, however, I think we want to just maybe wait to, to replay Adeline because they probably block Adeline here, right? I think we just send Adeline plus Veteran and uh, the 1-1. One, one. And then just plan to replay Adeline. I don't want to give them a Grand Abolisher here, though. I think it's too important to keep that around. Okay, if they want to go that direction, then we can just play post-combat Spellbook Vendor. Yeah, and Copper Coat plus Spellbook Vendor should get it done. Nice! We swept. Yeah, really happy with the deck. So, um, let's take a look at the stats. Okay, so we are currently 73% win rate, 38 wins, and 14 losses. So, yeah, really happy with how everything's going so far. 73% win rate on the play, 60% on the draw. And the matchups haven't changed a whole lot here, but still very good against uh, Mono Red Aggro and um, above average here against Boros. So we will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys, so much for watching again. And, um, if, again, if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. It really does help the channel. Take care. Mm -hmm.